Hey guys, welcome back to another... Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 Blueprint tutorial. My name is Devin Sherry, and today we're going to be working on the uh, grab and throw physics objects uh, blueprint that I had shown off an ex as an example a few weeks back. Um, a big shout out uh, to TJ Ballard. He had a tutorial up uh, somewhere in the Epic forums uh, or in the Epic, Epic Games documentation here about how to do this as well. If you want to check it out, there's going to be a link in the description for him and all his stuff, but this is based on what he did, a little few minor tweaks and things like that, but for majority it's a lot what he did, but I made some changes just to make it my own, so uh, let me first demonstrate what's, what we're going to be doing. Uh, so what we have here is just the ability to lift objects and then you know throw them if you want, um, and then you know you can throw them this way too if you just let go of them, uh, but if you hold down right click, you'll be able to hold it, and then if you press left click while you hold it, that's when it shoots it off. So that's pretty much all we're going to be doing. And you can see from this is all the blueprint right here, this section. Uh, so it's kind of a lot, but we're going to take our time, explain it as much as we can here to see exactly what's going on and how to do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and uh, delete this. Um, and we'll go ahead and delete the variables as well. There's going to be quite a few. Ready. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is primarily what we're going to use for the right mouse button. So let's just right click and go to the right mouse button. Uh, by the way, we're in our first person character, so if you're going to do this for your character class, just make sure you're in that blueprint. And the first thing we're going to do uh, is check to see if our physics handles could be active, because we need that some sort of handle to make sure that we're able to pick up and throw these physical objects. Uh, so this requires a new variable, it's going to be a boolean. Uh, we're going to call this a physics handle active. Change its type to boolean set its default value to false, and then we're going to alt left click drag it out, set it to true, uh, and connect it to pressed. So every time we press the right mouse button, we're going to tell, hey, our physics handle is active now. Uh, and what we're going to do then is uh, check a line trace. We're basically just going to do a line trace and we're going to check for certain objects. That object is going to be physics objects, so that's going to require a new variable. Uh, we're going to call this uh, physics object type. And it's going to be a very special variable type. If you just type an object at the bottom, there's going to be an enum for e object type query. And then we're going to click here this grid to make it an array. And then we're going to add one element to that array and tell it to look for physics bodies. Uh, so what this variable does is it checks, hey, you know, are we looking at, are we connecting with a physics object type right now? Uh, if we are, that's when we're going to start doing a few select things. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new node. It's going to be a line trace for objects. Let's see if I spelled that right. Nope. Uh, line trace for objects. We're going to connect that to the set true of the physics handle. And the object types, that's where we're going to throw in this array. We'll throw that down here. And then we're going to change the draw debug type uh, to uh, let's do uh, for duration. And now we need a start and end point. So the start point is pretty easy. Uh, what we're going to do is go into the my character variables and grab the first person camera and do a get world location. So basically, basically getting the location of the player camera. And that's where we're going to start our trace from. Simple enough. Uh, it's actually the end location that's going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, so the end location, uh, we're going to need the first person camera again. We're going to need to get the forward vector. And now we need to create a new variable. It's going to be a float. We're going to call it pickup distance. Uh, make it not an array. Make it a float. And we'll make its default value 500. Uh, so basically, that's going to be the distance between you and an object before you're able to pick it up. That's how long the trace is essentially going to be. So let's control left click drag that out to get that. And we're going to multiply the forward vector by the pickup distance. And then we're going to add the location of the player camera to the result of that multiplication. And then put that result into our end. So basically what we're doing is uh, the start location is going to be us. And the end location is going to be our location plus 500 units in front of us, pretty much. Uh, so if that's simple enough. Uh, so what we need to do now is uh, break the hit result. You're going to get a butt ton of stuff here. 
uh, including the location, the hit component, the bone name, stuff like that. Some very important pieces of information. And then what we're going to do first is get the location here. Actually, no. First, we're going to get the actor location. And by actor location, it's going to be us. Oops. There we go. Get actor location. And we're going to subtract from that the location of our hit result. And then we're going to get the vector length. And then we're going to promote that to a variable called object location. Uh, so let's get organized here. So essentially what we're doing is we're throwing a line trace 500 units in front of us. Once it hits something, it's going to basically tell us how far away it is. So if there's an object that's 100 units away and we hit right mouse button, our object location, it's going to be 100. Basically, all that really means. Uh, so next, uh, we're going to do some more uh, additional logic here. Uh, what we need to do now is set the object's location. I mean, I'm sorry, the rotation. And we want the rotation of the object to have the same rotation as our player. So we're going to get actor rotation and then promote that to a variable called object rotation. Plug that up. And now, what we need to do uh, is go back to our trace. Uh, this return value basically tells us whether or not we did or did not hit something. Uh, so we, I want to get the hit result out of the way just a little bit. I right, grab the return value here. We're going to do a reroute node just for organizational purposes. Do another one. And drag up. We'll do a branch. Connect that up. Uh, and we don't really want to work with the true aspect because if we don't hit an object, obviously we don't want anything to happen. So if we do indeed hit an object, uh, what we want to do now, um, this is something specifically TJ Ballard did. Uh, it's pretty smart um, depending on what you want to go ahead and do. Uh, but each component has a mass like we talked about earlier. So we can get the mass. And we want to see if it has a certain mass or not. So we can do less than. And you can make this any number you want. Uh, 500 is the best number for us here. Uh, then we're going to do another branch uh, from here, but we'll add a reroute node first. Drag that up, do a branch, hit true. So basically, hey, does the object we're touching have mass less than 500? Yes, okay, we can continue with what we're doing. And what we're going to do now is create a new physics handle component. And to start that off with, we need our transformation of our player. So get actor transform. And then drag from that, add physics handle component. And it's from here we're going to create new variables. Uh, first, starting with the return value here, we're going to do promote to variable. And we're going to call this physics handle. So this is going to be a representation of our uh, physics handle component and all of its calls and functions that allotted to it. And then we're going to create another variable with our hit component. We're going to drag that out, uh, add a reroute node, and pull it out some more. Do another reroute. And We'll keep rerouting it because that's fun. Uh, but now we're going to set this as a variable. So promote to variable. We'll call it physics object. So now we have a variable representing our physics object that we have in our control. And now we need to grab our physics handle. And a function that we can pull out from this is grab component. So let's plug that up. Uh, so the component is going to be the physics object that we have. So we can just grab from one of its reroutes and plug it into the component. Uh, the end bone name, uh, like I said earlier, we can grab bone name here uh, from our hit result. So we'll add some reroute nodes just because we can. And we'll just throw it in. And then the grab location, it's going to be the location that we have from our hit result. So let's drag that out, do a reroute node, plug that up into grab location. And the last thing we need to do is we'll grab from our reroute node for the physics object. We'll do another reroute. Uh, but what, then we need to set a collision response. So set collision response to channel. Plug that up. Change world stack to pawn. And we'll do ignore. Uh, just so the physics object doesn't really collide with us. Uh, that way we don't have any spazzy movements or anything like that. 
Now the beauty of this is now we can play. Uh, nothing's going to happen just yet, uh, but we can see the trace is working. So we know that's being called, and we see it kind of turn green because it hit something. Uh, but we're missing a very important aspect here, and that's going to be uh, what we need to do for our event tick. Uh, so at every tick of the game, let's just first grab that. What we need to do is uh, create a handle location, and we basically need to set a target location or rotation uh, for our physics handle and everything like that. Uh, so what we first need to do from this tick is grab a physics handle active that uh, Boolean we had before, and pull a branch from it. We want to see if our physics handle is active or not, whether or not we're trying to pick up an object. And now what we need to do is get control rotation. We need to do a get forward vector. And now we need to multiply this vector uh, by the object location. So let's get that. We'll do a multiply. Point that up. And now let me move this down a little bit. We're going to get our actor, loca our actor location. And we're just going to add these two vectors together. Now we're going to pull this and create a new variable called handle location. Plug that up to true. Oh, I'm sorry, we're missing one last thing. Uh, from this addition, we're going to do another add. Oops. Add another vector. We're just going to add 50 to the Z, uh, just for offsetting purposes. Now we'll plug that up to the handle location. And then last but not least, let's grab our physics handle. Do set target location and rotation. Plug that up. And now we're going to set its new location uh, to the handle location that we just made. And then its new rotation is going to be our get actor rotation. Because we do want this to rotate with the player. And now we can compile and now we can play and we'll be able to grab objects. So let's jump in. There we go. Uh, but we're seeing that it's spinning a lot, and we can't let go, obviously. <laughs> uh, to fix that, we're going to go to our grab component and hit check constrain rotation. And now, if we play, we'll grab a box. It stays still, like it's not rotating everywhere. Uh, but now, if we let go of the mouse button, it stays with us. We can't let go. Uh, so that's what we're going to be working on next. So to get that going, let's go back into our blueprint. And we're going to be focusing now with the released aspect of this. Uh, so let's go ahead and drag this down. We'll create a reroute node. And the first thing we're going to do is set our physics handle active to false. We don't want that to be true anymore. And now let's grab our physics handle. And it has a function that we can pull from it. Uh, it's called release component. So let's plug that up. And now it's going to release the component that we have control. And now what we want to do, uh, we're going to create a new variable. This is going to make a little more sense once we do the left mouse button functionality. Uh, it's going to be a Boolean variable. And we're going to just call it is held. Compile. Default value is going to be false. And we're going to grab this is held. We're going to do a branch now. So we're going to tell, see if the object is being held anymore. Um, if, it's, if it's true, we're going to wake the physics rigid body. Uh, so we're going to grab our physics object this time. And it has a function out of it called wake rigid body. We're going to plug that up to true. And the last thing we're going to do is grab our physics object one more time. And now do set collision. Oops. Channel. 
So it's inclusion responsible channel. Uh, we're gonna do the pawn again. And we're gonna do block. Oops. Now we're just gonna set that collision response if it is held as false. So now we can compile, we can save, and we can jump back in. And now we should be able to release the object. So let's grab it, let go. Grab it, and let go. So that's all working. Uh, so now we're just going to do the left mouse button functionality. Uh, this requires, obviously, the left, left mouse button event. So let's right click, do the left mouse button. And now we're going to do is held. We're going to set that to true if this is pressed. And we're going to set it to false if it's not, if it's released. And now we're only going to primarily work with the left mouse button if it's being pressed. So the first thing we're going to check for is whether or not the physics handle is active or not. So let's grab that and do a branch. Because again, what we're going to be doing with this left mouse button is when we're holding it and we left click, it shoots the object. So we want to know if we're actually holding something. That's definitely important. Now, if we are, obviously we're releasing this object. So we then want to set physics handle to false. And then we're going to copy this section here. We're going to plug that up. The only difference now is at the end, we're going to add an impulse, so it just fires off. Uh, so this requires a new variable. It's going to be a float. We're going to call this impulse value. And we're going to set its default value uh, to 2000. And now to do this, we need the physics object. Let's grab that. And do add impulse. We're going to check velocity change, just so it changes velocity, just goes a different way. And now for the impulse value, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our first person camera because we want to push this forward. And then we're going to grab the get forward vector. And we're just going to multiply uh, the result return value of that forward vector by our impulse value. So let's multiply. Plug that up. And that goes into impulse. And then we can just drag this up. Plug it in. Compile and save, and then we should be done. So let's check this out. So we have it. I'm going to hit left mouse button, and it gets thrown. Left mouse button gets thrown. Uh, but we can also just let go of it if we want to. Oh, that went fine. And that should be it. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for watching. Again, a big shout out to TJ Ballard. Again, check out some links in the description below. I'll have some links to his original tutorial if you want to check that out. Uh, but for now, again, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot for watching this Blueprint tutorial. Again, big shout out to TJ Ballard for helping me out, actually being a reference point for this tutorial. So I do hope you all learned a lot. If you enjoyed the content, definitely click on me or the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed to the Devin Lowell Design channel. On the right is going to be some more Blueprint example videos and more playlists for our tutorials for Unreal 4 Blueprints. Uh, below is some, is some social media stuff you can hit me up on, on Instagram, on Jerry's Cherries, on Twitter if you want to follow me. Um, but overall, all I care about is that we watch the video, we share the content, we like, uh, we comment saying what we want to see next. Uh, but for now, I want to say thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!